you have been uh, you have been an opponent from the border wall for a very long time now. Uh, your thoughts about the Trump administration asking for one billion dollars in funding to expand the border wall? Well, it's just a, a ridiculous request, but. The Trump administration right now is really playing with fantasy money. That's just an ask uh, to Congress for a billion dollars uh, for additional border wall. The fact of the matter is, is that the promise he made to the American people uh, was that he would build a concrete barrier from Brownsville to San Diego, Texas, uh, and that will never happen. Uh, with respect to his current $1 billion request, I don't think that's ever going to happen either because there are sensible members of Congress and in the Senate even from the president's own party who acknowledge that uh, spending that kind of money on a border wall is just a bad investment. I'll give you an example, Eddie. Um, you know, back, back home, we have three major infrastructure projects uh, that that kind of money would help uh, promote. For example, the Raymondville Drain Project, which is a flood, prevention, flood control project that would help Hidalgo County and Willacy County. Um, you know, uh, about $100 million in federal monies is needed for that, deepening the port of Brownsville uh, and uh, restoring our region's Resaca restoration systems, those are better places where we can put that money. Uh, in fact, uh, even along our nation's ports of entry on the southern border and the northern border, there are, there are infrastructure improvements that we need to make um, that a billion dollars would pay for, and those very improvements would do a whole lot more for providing this nation's security than the border, all, than the border wall ever will. Still, Congressman, do you really expect the Trump administ administration to back down from this border wall initiative? Um, I don't think that the Trump uh, administrations will, I don't think that the Trump administration will back down uh, from their rhetoric, uh, but as the president uh, figured out uh, with his approach on the health care bill, uh, what he says and what he can actually do are two different things because, and that's why we have a separation of powers. I mean, um, the, the president has quickly learned that he has to deal with a House and a Senate. Um, and so I think it's just gonna be a whole lot more difficult uh, for the president to follow through on his, on the promise he made with respect to the border wall uh, than he ever thought. Well, Congressman, the administration's initiative to deport immigrants, undocumented immigrants with criminal records is well underway across the United States. Uh, your thoughts about how this uh, initiative is going, not only across the United States, but also here in South Texas? Well, um, uh, let me point out that this administration's deportation priorities isn't just with respect to people that have committed uh, crimes since they came to this country. Under President Obama, uh, the, the, the Obama administration's priorities for deportation were one, uh, people who had been convicted of felonies, and two, people who had been convicted of misdemeanors three times. The Trump administration has radically shifted that so that anybody who came across uh, illegally, even if they've done nothing wrong uh, since they've gotten here, is subject to deportation. Uh, I'll give you an example of a gentleman in Indiana who came across in the year 2000. Uh, he made his home in Indiana. He married a woman from Indiana. He has three children from Indiana. Uh, built a restaurant business that is very popular in that small town in Indiana. And two weeks ago, um, he was apprehended. He's currently being detained in New Mexico. His wife and children are in Indiana, uh, and he's about to be sent to Mexico. Um, so the Trump deportation strategy is not just about taking people uh, that have committed crimes while they've been here. It, the Trump deportation uh, strategy is to deport anybody who came across illegally uh, even if they've li even they're, they're contributing significantly to our nation's economy, uh, people who've been here for a long time, uh, who've married and have kids uh, that were born here, um, you know, so it's it's a it's a, a very very uh, dangerous time. We're in very dangerous times with respect uh, to this country's approach to immigration and to deportation. Congressman, the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee uh, held a uh, news conference just a while ago, just to update. Uh, the media on their progress as far as this investigation into the Trump campaign and uh, and the Russians. Uh, but also, of course, the uh, our House Intelligence Committee, the ranking Democrat has asked the leader of that committee, Devin Nunez, 
uh, to recuse himself from the investigation. Will that happen? Well, I don't know, but um, the ranking Democrat is Adam Schiff. He's a good friend of mine, and I agree with him that uh, Congressman Nunez uh, should remove himself from that investigation. Uh, I think there are, are even members of uh, Ch Chairman Nunez's own party, for example, Congressman Walter Jones from North Carolina, who agree uh, that not only should Nunez step aside, uh, but that it's time for us uh, to have an independent commission investigate uh, the communications between uh, the Trump campaign and uh, Russian, the, Russian co the, the, the country of Russia and its surrogates. Congressman, but my question is, do you think that Devin Nunez will actually recuse himself from this particular investigation? Sure, there's a lot of people asking for that, but do you think that that will happen? Yeah, yeah I think that's a good question. I think uh, so far, Congressman Nunez is uh, digging, his, digging his heels in, uh, so it's kind of tough to tell uh, whether or not he will actually do that. I wanted to ask you, uh, you've been in the, um, in the Congress now for, for, for a few years, and you've seen a lot. Have you ever seen such a polarized Congress as it is right now between Democrats and Republicans? Well, I think from the partisan point of view, uh, my first four years in Congress were marked by quite a bit of uh, polarization, uh, and we're seeing that polarization today. Um, but what's different about what we're seeing now um, is since President Trump has taken office, it's just been a whole lot more chaotic um, in, in the last two and a half months than, than in, during any time uh, during the previous four years. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's very difficult to tell what's going to happen from one day to the next. Um, you know, we've got... Uh, tweets that go out, investigations that pop up. Uh, it's just a very, it's very interesting time. It's, it's, it's exciting. Um, but, you know, I'm really concerned about the direction that we're headed here. Uh, just very quickly while we have time, I want to go, want to go back to the uh, investigation. Uh, you have, and many are asking for an independent prosecutor in this particular investigation. Uh, do you think that will take place? I mean, right now, like we said, uh, Nunez, you said, is digging his heels in, re refusing to recuse himself. Do you think there's a, 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 a good chance or a chance at all that there will be an independent counsel, independent prosecutor in this investigation? Well, as things currently stand, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, the attorney general, who is appointed by the president, um, and... Uh, the majority uh, in the Senate and the majority of the, the House, uh, it's, it's their decision to make. And since um, they're all of the president's same party, um, it's, it's difficult to imagine that given current circumstances uh, that they would change their mind. But, um, you know, the, the situation is evolving. Uh, we get new information every day. Um, there are Republican senators who have a great concern uh, with the direction, um, the direction in which Chairman Nunez took uh, this investigation here over the last week, um, you know, so who knows what kind of information is going to uh, pop up ahead, and you know, we'll just have to wait and see. All right, Congressman, and finally, I told your office that I would give you the opportunity to uh, expand on anything that you might want to for your constituents here in the Valley. Anything that you want to tell uh, people here in the Valley about the job that you're doing right now uh, in Congress in Washington? Well, you know, yesterday, um, Congress voted on an Internet privacy bill that I voted against, and that's because um, I really wanted to protect the privacy of uh, people who use the internet. Um, but the other thing with, with all the craziness going on in Washington, what people need to know uh, is that Congressman Cuellar, Gonzalez, and myself work on a whole lot of other things. And, uh, you know, with r right now uh, we're focusing on infrastructure projects like the one I mentioned, the Raymondville Drain, which would provide flood protection in Hidalgo and Willacy County, the deepening of the Port of Brownsville, uh, maintaining the Port of Harlingen. Uh, there are many, many agricultural issues that we're working on. Um, you know, so to the extent that, uh, you know, what we see 
um, on CNN and Fox News and in the national media. Uh, lots of other things uh, go on in here in Washington. Just today we had constituents from back home uh, from the Alzheimer's um, Foundation. Uh, we had students uh, from, the, from the Syracuse Science Foundation that uh, are, um, you know, graduated from high schools in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, the Cameron County Housing Authority was here, the Hidalgo County Housing Authority, and the Donna Housing Authority. Uh, so we continue to work on all sorts of things that uh, help our constituents on a daily basis. Congressman, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I know you have to get to the floor to, uh, to vote, actually, so we're going to let you go. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time on Connect to Congress. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.